In this lens review, we're going to be reviewing one of Canon's most expensive prime lenses, the Canon RF 50mm f 1.2L USM lens. And I'm gonna start right now. Launched all the way back in 2018, this is one of Canon's earliest RF lenses. Launched alongside the Canon EOS R, as well as the Canon RF 35mm f1.8, the versatile Canon RF 24-105, and the amazing Canon RF 28-70mm f2. But since then, Canon have released a whole bunch of newer RF lenses, like for example, the RF 50mm f1.8, which is far better value for money. So in today's video, we're going to work out, is this lens still worth a spot in your camera bag? So first up, let's talk about the overall build quality, the lens design, and also what you get inside the box. So this lens is made of a premium plastic and metal construction, which should make this lens quite lightweight, but thanks to its very complicated optical formula, coming in with 15 elements in nine groups, this is by far one of the largest 50mm prime lenses you can buy, far larger than the older EF 50mm f1.2 and also the newer RF 50mm f1.8. Now on the side of the lens, you've got two switches. You've got an autofocus to manual focus switch, as well as a focus limiter switch, which will allow you to change from full focus to 80 centimeters to infinity. Now above that, you've also got a focus ring, which is electronically coupled to the focus motor. Now I find in this case, it's a little bit too loose, but I guess that's just more personal preference. And then above that, you've also got a control ring. Now this basically allows you to change any custom function within the camera, like shutter speed, aperture, or even ISO. I have actually mine connected to white balance. So when I go from an inside environment to an outside environment, I can actually change my white balance accordingly. Now inside the box, you've also got a lens hood, a front and rear lens cap, the actual lens itself, and also a lens pouch. So actually you get a decent amount inside the box. But what I think is the best thing about this lens is you've got weather sealing, which is missing from quite a few other prime lenses that I've used. And I love that this lens has got that, especially as a wedding photographer, or even if you're using it for a street, sometimes it's raining or cold or even snowing, having weather sealing I think is really important. And I think that's one of the main reasons I think you should upgrade to this lens if you are shooting on maybe the RF 50mm f1.8, which is missing weather sealing. So because of that, I'm gonna be giving it the full marks, the 10 out of 10. So next up, let's talk about the all important image quality. Cause if you're spending this much money on a lens, you're gonna want absolutely perfection when it comes to image quality. Now this lens is only one of two RF lenses that offers you an aperture of f1.2. You get this lens here, the RF 50mm, as well as the RF 85mm f1.2. Now a 1.2 aperture offers you two major benefits over any other prime lens. Firstly, it lets in double, less double the amount of light versus an f1.8 lens, which already lets in a ton of light, as well as it offers you an amazing shallow depth of field. In fact, just standing 10 feet from your subject, the depth of field at f1.2 is only three centimeters, which is about that. So if you're focusing on someone's eye, the front of their nose might be out of focus. That is how shallow the depth of field is at f1.2. And with that, you also get beautiful background separation. Now I took this lens to London and because it's Christmas time, you've got a bunch of Christmas lights and it, I must say it was a perfect lens for that. Now, because this lens has got a 10 bladed rounded aperture diaphragm, even if you step down, you're still gonna get nice round bokeh balls. So for background separation and for the bokeh itself, this is probably one of the best lenses you can buy. It doesn't matter what you point it at, I've just found that the images were beautiful. But let's have a look a little bit more scientifically and point it at some graph images. Okay, so let's have a look at image sharpness. Now, if we go ahead and zoom in at f1.2, which is wide open for this lens, we're getting razor sharp image quality straight out of the gate in the center, where the corners are a little bit softer and a little bit darker. We can brighten them up by stepping down to f1.4, as well as they get a little bit sharper, and it's pretty much the same story for f2. The corners are still a little bit softer, where the center is razor sharp. 
Now, if we step down to f2.8, it really brightens up those corners and it really makes them sharp. Sure, not as sharp as the center, but definitely sharper than most other prime lenses at this point. Now, if we step down to f4, this is where we really see how sharp this lens is. The center sharpness as well as the corner sharpness are pretty much identical at this point. And it's a pretty much the same story for f5.6 as well as f8. In fact, I would say this is probably one of the sharpest lenses you can buy if you shoot at f8. Now, f11, they are still quite sharp, but if we step down to f16, you will notice diffraction does start taking a little bit of shape and it does start softening the image. But overall, this is probably one of the sharpest lenses for corner to corner sharpness that you can buy. Right, so let's have a look at distortion and vignetting. So 50 millimeters at f1.2 wide open, there's pretty much no distortion to be seen. It is a very flat profile. But as you can see, there is a decent amount of vignetting, pretty much covering the entire image frame. So vignetting is very bad, wide open at f1.2. We can start pushing that vignetting to the corners at f1.4 and also at f2, but there is still vignetting at f2.8. To completely remove it, I recommend stepping down to either f4 or f5.6. So distortion is really good, but vignetting is quite poor for this lens. Next up, let's have a look at its macro ability as well as close up image quality. Now, firstly, this is not a macro lens as it's only got a close up focus distance of just 40 centimeters or 15.75 inches with a maximum reproduction ratio of just 0.19. So definitely not a macro lens. And you can definitely see that with the close up image quality. Wide open at f1.2, you can see it's just not very sharp. Where if we step down to f1.4, we can definitely increase the amount of resolution and also decrease the amount of chromatic aberration on high contrast edges. Now, the actual image quality definitely improves at f2 as well as f2.8 but to get really sharp images I recommend either stepping down to f4, f5.6 or f8. You can see how much more resolution you get between f1.2 and f8. So if you are aiming for close up image quality definitely step this lens down but again do remember it's not a macro lens. And lastly let's have a look at flaring. Now, thanks to the amount of elements and groups in this lens, you are going to get flaring. But what's quite nice is the flaring looks quite cinematic. It doesn't look bad at all. It is quite strong and it does reduce the amount of contrast when you are pointing it at bright lights, but it isn't ugly at all. I find other prime lenses have ugly flaring, where this one's quite flat and it is quite nice. So if you do like flaring, this lens is going to be great. If you don't like flaring, highly recommend using the lens hood, which you do get inside the box. So overall, this lens has amazing image quality. Probably one of the sharpest prime lenses that you can buy wide open at f1.2, which is really impressive, especially in the corners. The only two things that I think really lets it down, firstly, is that flaring It is quite strong, although I would say it does look quite cinematic, so highly recommend using that lens hood if you wanna reduce the amount of flaring. And also that vignetting is quite strong wide open at f1.2. It will definitely darken your overall image. So highly recommend turning on peripheral illuminations or just simply stepping down to f2.8 to f4 to remove that vignetting. But apart from that, I think this image quality of this lens is stellar and probably one of the best lenses you can buy when it comes to overall image quality. So I'm not gonna mark it down too badly because I do actually like that flaring and the vignetting is a, you can fix it. I'm sure you can fix it. So I am actually gonna give it the full marks, the 10 out of 10. So next up, let's talk about the all important size and weight of this lens. And this is where this lens really does let itself down. This is not just a big lens. This lens is a massive lens. This is a jumbo lens compared to other 50 mil prime lenses. Now what's nice is there's so many other options out there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare it to five other lenses in this review. So first up is the Canon RF 50mm f1.2. This lens here comes in at 950 grams. And for comparison, let's compare it to the older EF 50mm f1.2 L. Got the same focal length and same aperture, yet it only comes in at 580 grams. So about half the weight of the newer RF 50mm f1.2. Which, to be honest with you, doesn't make any sense. It's got the same focal length and same aperture. So let's have a look at the newer RF 50mm f1.8. That lens comes in at 160 grams. And then you've got the older EF 50mm f1.4. That comes in at 290 grams. Then you've got the Sigma 
50mm f1.4 art. And don't forget, this has got great build quality made out of a full metal construction. And even that only comes in at 815 grams. And then lastly, you've got the Nifty 50, the Plastic Fantastic, the cheapest lens on our list today. That only comes in at 159 grams. So I really don't understand why this lens is so big, especially when you compare it to the older EF1. It's got the same focal length of 50mm and got the same aperture of f1.2. Why is it double the size and double the weight? And if you have a look at the size chart here, you can just see it towers above all other lenses by a considerable margin. So for size and weight, this lens really is not good. So if you're a travel photographer or size and weight is a big issue for you, stay away from this lens. I'd recommend the either the older EF 50mm 1.2 or the newer RF 50mm f1.8. And with a filter thread size of just 77 millimeters, this is considerably larger than the 43 millimeter filter thread you get on the RF 50mm f1.8. So yeah, not a good sign for size and weight. And because of that, I'm only gonna be giving it a three out of 10. Right, so let's move on to the all important autofocus and image stabilization and what this lens is like for video. Now, autofocus on an f1.2 aperture lens is really important. If you have a look at the older EF 1.2 aperture lenses, you'll notice that the autofocus just can't keep up with the depth of field. And even if your subject moves even slightly, you're going to miss the focus, which is really important if you're aiming for a depth of field up to three centimeters in thickness. So even slight movements means you're gonna be out of focus. So you need a fast and dependable autofocus. And what's really nice with this lens, is that's what you're getting. You're getting exactly what you need from an f1.2. You're getting fast and reliable autofocus thanks to its USM or ultrasonic focus motor. Again, like I was saying, the older EF just couldn't keep up with the speed of subjects. And only in a portrait setting or subjects that don't move would you be able to get reliably sharp images at f1.2. But this lens here, you can take it out, you can do street photography, you can do weddings, you can do landscapes, and shoot at f1.2 knowing what you're focusing on is going to be sharp which I think is really important. And when it comes to image stabilization, it doesn't have it. And there's no surprise, it's an f1.2 aperture lens. Again, most lenses don't have image stabilization and even most prime lenses don't have image stabilization. So I'm not gonna mark it down in that regard. But what I really liked is that dependable autofocus. And that is what's really important, especially at f1.2. So because of that, and because it just lived up to the expectation, I was actually really surprised of how many photos I actually got in focus at f1.2. I'm used to using the older EF 1.2 and it just missed focus about, I don't know, 50 to 60% of the time, and it just didn't in this example. So because of that, I'm giving it again the four marks, the 10 out of 10. And last but not least is price. So what I can asking for, for all of these amazing features, F1.2 aperture, reliable autofocus, it's gonna be expensive, and it's even more expensive than you could even possibly imagine. Coming in at 2,449 pounds, and used, that comes in around 1,500 to 1,600 pounds in reasonable condition with the box and full accessory. So very, very expensive, especially when you compare it to the older EF 50mm f1.2. Brand new, you can still buy it brand new, comes in at 1,629 pounds, but because it's a far older lens, you can buy it secondhand for far less, around five to 600 pounds in reasonable condition. Now, if we compare it to the newer RF 50mm f1.8, which is actually one of the cheapest lenses you can buy for a full frame RF lens camera, that comes in at just 170 79 pounds and secondhand you can pick it for around 100 to 150 pounds in reasonable condition then you've got the older ef 50 mil f 1.4 that comes in at 409 pounds but again because it's an older lens you can pick it up for around 100 to 200 quid again in reasonable condition and then you've got the sigma 50 mil f 1.4 that comes in at 649 pounds again i really like this lens especially for the price point and second hand you'll be able to find it from between 500 to 600 pounds again in reasonable condition and the last lens on my list today is the nifty 50 the plastic fantastic doesn't have the best image quality but definitely the best in price only coming in at 109 pounds but second hand i'm sure you'll be able to find it between 50 to 100 pounds again in reasonable condition so you can really see how how expensive the RF 50mm f1.2 is. Pretty much double the price, even when we look at second hand. And I guess that's just firstly because it's a fairly new lens, but also because it's a good lens. It's really good. So 
Because of that, I can't give it a very high score because of how crazily expensive it is. So I'm only gonna be giving it a four out of 10. Right, so it's that time of the video, guys, where we look at the pros and cons to really work out, is this RF 50mm f1.2 really worth a spot in your camera bag? Let's have a look at the pros first. First up, you're getting great build quality, which is great if you're a professional photographer, as well as it's offering weather sealing, which is great if you're taking to a dusty or moisture-rich environment. You're also getting ultra sharp images straight out of the gate at f1.2, which is really impressive. You're also getting great bokeh and beautiful background separation, thanks to the 10 rounded bladed aperture diaphragm, as well as that f1.2 aperture. You're also getting really fast and dependable autofocus, which again, is really important if you're shooting at f1.2. So that's a decent amount of pros. Let's have a look at the cons and why maybe another lens might be worth a spot in your camera bag. First up, this lens is really big and really heavy. One of the largest 50mm prime lenses you can buy. So if you're a travel photographer, stay away. There are plenty of other smaller lenses that will be better for you. And also, it is a lot of money. And there are so many other 50mm prime lenses out there, there's always going to be a prime lens that will fit your budget. So unless you're a professional photographer, this lens is far out of budget for most photographers. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So there is my lens review of the Canon RF 50mm f1.2. So, would I recommend this lens? No, I don't think so. I think it's a great lens for what it does, but the downsides to it are just too big. Firstly, the size and weight aspect, unless you've got arms like Jared Polin, it's just gonna weigh you down so much. To think, if you place it with a camera and maybe a flash gun, let's say a wedding photographer, that setup could weigh up to two kilos. And just imagine carrying that around all day. I must say, I carried it around London and after a while, I was like, I don't wanna take it out of my camera bag. It's just too much of a faff. And again, because of the size of it, it takes up a lot of room in your camera bag. So maybe you could have to leave other lenses at home. And maybe you're a travel photographer, you don't necessarily wanna leave other lenses because it's such a specialist prime lens. I'd maybe bring more of a versatile zoom lens with you instead of this lens. So, and 90% of photographers, I think the RF 50mm f1.8 is more than enough of the lens. But, and if you're after the best image quality, the amazing aperture of f1.2 and that really reliable autofocus, then this lens is going to be perfect. But I think for 90% of photographers out there, it's just far too big, far too heavy, and far too expensive. And for that reason, that's why it's not going to be in my camera bag anytime soon. And with an overall score of 37 out of 50, if you're a professional photographer, this is a recommended lens to have in your camera bag. But for everybody else, I personally think that the RF 50mm f1.8 is a far better lens to have in your camera bag. But of course, write down in the comments below what you guys think. I love to hear your guys' feedback. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.